Do not put yourself in the box that is holding you back. People with five-figure lifestyles and five-figure incomes put themselves in a box all the time. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not this. I'm not that. No. Seven-figure income people have the mindset, you know what? I might not be great at that now, but I'm going to go and become great at that. Hey, do you want some harsh truth? You cannot have a seven-figure income on a five-figure lifestyle. Hey, this is Craig Valentine, the world's most disciplined man, coming at you from the Empire Podcast Studios. Listen, I am going to download something. Bedros is away, so Craig is going to play and help you become so much better, wealthier, more productive, everything that you need to be in life so that you live the life of your dreams. Because right now, I know what you're doing. You're waking up, you're snoozing, scrolling, smoking, drinking, watching Netflix, all that sort of stuff. And inside your stomach, it is eating you up. You're getting anxiety, you have depression because you are not operating like a high performer. You know you want to be a high performer and you know you have the capacity to be a high performer, but there is an e-break on you. And you know, years ago, Pedro said that to me. He goes, man, you got the e-brake on. You got to let go of the e-brake. And I was emotionally quenched up and I was super uptight and I had to let go of that side of the bad habits in my life. Now, I had the discipline in place that I'm going to download to you today, but I didn't have the EQ, the emotional quotient to translate my IQ into income at the level that I'm able to do today. I had to become a better leader. So listen, Everybody is imperfect and that's okay. But it's not imperfect to remain imperfect and frustrated and struggling, as I like to say, stuck and struggling in the position that you're at. If you are in the same position one year from today, but only a year older and not more wealthier, not more successful, listen, that is on you. And we're going to fix that today. Okay. So most people who want the seven figure income who come to me are really they have a long list of things that they are doing that keep them stuck in a five-figure lifestyle. And maybe you're like me, you know, you, I was born on a farm, raised there, you know, all the people I know had factory jobs. A lot of my friends still go to the same bars on Friday night and sit in the same seats and drink the same drinks as they did 20 years ago. And if you're living your life like that, even if it's only been two years in a row, of you doing the same sort of things and you not breaking out of that bubble, well, time has to change, all right? So time has come. And so if you come from the modest means like I do and you are surrounded by five-figure influences, well, you have a five-figure mindset downloaded, installed in your head, and it's tough to break away from that and reach that seven figures. If you're in a lonely entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial island and every single time you go to a conference like Fitness Business Summit or the Empire Summit or you know, maybe it's Lewis Howe's Greatness Summit and you go back to your hometown and you're surrounded by those people who are like, why do you go to those things? You're wasting your money. Let's go drink. Let's go party. Man, it doesn't matter even if you are making a million dollars a year. You will get sucked down to that level all the time. So we're going to make you so much stronger and give you habits of steel today. So the very first thing on a five-figure lifestyle that holds us back is the snooze button. You've heard this from Bedros all the time, never hit snooze. And I have committed to never hitting snooze again in my entire life. There are days when even the world's most disciplined man, Craig Valentine, wakes up and wants to hit snooze. But I have a system in place that stops me. The first thing is that I have Bedros' voice running through my head. Craigie, never hit snooze. You're never going to hit snooze again. Hitting snooze is weak. Hitting snooze is a five-figure lifestyle, so I'll never hit snooze. Now, I also have these additional systems in place. My phone is across the room, and I have to get up, and when I get up, I do this. I turn the lights on, and I even go and put water on my face as quickly as possible to change my mental state. Learn that from Tony Robbins. So if you change your mental state, you're awake really fast, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to hit snooze. But if you hit snooze, yeah, you get 10 minutes of sleep, and then you want to hit snooze again, and it's just, it's like eating another piece of candy, another piece of candy, another piece of candy. You're just going for this hit that never actually pays off on anything. 
But if you get up, if you suffer for two to three minutes, that's all you have to do is suffer for two to three minutes, and then you have won the day. You know that. You've had days like that. And you've had days where you've hit the snooze button and slept in, and you feel like crap. How much longer are you going to let that go on for? If you want a seven-figure income, how much longer are you going to let your five-figure lifestyle hold you down? No longer. That's the answer. All right, so that's the first thing. We get rid of the snoozing, and we move on to the scrolling, right? What are you doing when you wake up? Oh, I got up. I didn't hit snooze. Well, maybe I'll just scroll through my Instagram. I'll scroll through Facebook, scroll through TikTok, whatever it is. These things are designed to be addictive. So when you wake up and you lose an hour to these things, you can't actually feel that bad because it's like putting an alcohol, alcoholic in a bar. Okay, an alcoholic in a bar who starts drinking, that stuff was designed to be addictive. Just like Instagram, there's thousands of engineers, PhDs from MIT out there every single day designing these things with red circles and moving on to the next video and short videos for short dopamine hits. It's designed to get you sucked in. And it's unfortunate that we have our smartest minds in the world, a lot of our smartest minds in the world, devoting their life to that. But that's the way it is. And you're never going to win that battle if you play by their rules. So again, you have to build a fence around yourself like I did with the alarm. When I'm working, I take my phone, I put it in airplane mode, I turn it off, I put it in another room, and I put it in a desk drawer. That's four levels I have to go through. I have to take it out, turn it on, I have to walk in the other room, first of all, and then I have to take it out of airplane mode. And oftentimes I'll be halfway through that and I'll hit my hand, put it back in, but I'll have won the game, all right? I don't follow people on Instagram, so I'm not getting sucked in. Oh, there's another post, there's another red circle. No, I don't see those things. I don't have notifications on my phone. I have a minimum number of apps because I'm playing to win. And when you set yourself up for success, you stop having that five-figure lifestyle, that five-figure day of wasted time, and you start making time for what matters so that you make more money in your business because now you have more time to drum up business, do more sales calls, generate more leads. You use social media. You don't let social media be used on you. My friend Joel Polish said that. It was such a powerful line. Use social media. Use it to generate leads and get sales calls, but do not let it be used upon you to suck away your time and your energy. Man, what a game changer. So I took it one step further and I said, I don't even use social media. I use business media. Instagram, that's my NBC. Facebook, that's my Fox. CB, uh, YouTube is my CBS. And now I'm a media magnet. I'm a mogul with all of these channels attracting people into my world. That's how I use business media. All of those things, all of those so-called social medias, I ain't very social. I ain't very social. You ever met me, you know that. And the thing is, I am not on social media to be sucked into social media. Instead, I'm there to control it. I'm there to benefit the world by delivering great content, showing them like, hey, wow, this is helpful. This podcast, I might, you might be watching this on YouTube, that's a great use of social media, of business media for me, because now I'm downloading my message. I'm changing your life. I'm making you better. I'm giving you more time with your kids, more time to work out. So now you don't skip the gym because like, oh, I wasted an hour on TikTok today. So I don't have time to go and work out. No, we've got you in control of that. So take control of your snoozing, take control of your scrolling, and then we get to move on to being late. I love this quote. First time uh, I heard it, was from actually from Penn of Penn and Teller, right? So you guys know Penn and Teller from Vegas, the magic show. So Penn, Penn Gillette is actually a very articulate speaker. I saw him at a libertarian conference, a libertarian investment conference, and he, and he spoke and he said this quote, which is actually attributed to Vince Lombardi, which goes like this. If you are on, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you are late, it's unforgivable. So you have to be early. If you were not early to a Vince Lombardi meeting, you were locked out. On time was late. Oh man, then you probably didn't play in the game. And you let the team down. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, everybody's late these days. You know, two o'clock meeting, I'll show up at 2.15. That's disrespectful to them. That's disrespectful to you. So show up early. 
Be professional. Change your ways. And if you are the type of person who sits there and thinks, oh, I can never be on time, don't put yourself in the box. Don't say, I can never lose weight. I can never be on time. I can't schmooze. I can't be an extrovert. I can't be good on video. Do not put yourself in the box that is holding you back. People with five-figure lifestyles and five-figure incomes put themselves in a box all the time. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not this. I'm not that. No. Seven-figure income people have the mindset, you know what? I might not be great at that now, but I'm going to go and become great at that. I might not be on time every single day now, but I'm going to get better. I'm going to go from being on time half the time to being on time 75% of the time, being on time 100% of the time, being early 100% of the time to be respectful to other people, to respect other people's time, to respect my own time, and to respect my family's time. Because if I'm on time to the meeting, the meeting ends on time, and I get home to my kids on time. Start taking time seriously, and never forget that to be late is unforgivable. Next, no more procrastination. You gotta be taking action every single day. How do you take action every single day? Well, you make it easier to take action. Why do we procrastinate? Oh man, I gotta write that article. So I'm gonna wake up in the morning, you know, I'm gonna goof around with my morning routine for a bit. Now I'm losing my willpower and discipline. I'm gonna go and check my email first. Now I'm sucked into that rabbit hole. Oh, I gotta go and eat breakfast. Now I'm delaying it even more. All right, now I'm finally sitting down. It's time to write my, my article on my computer. I open up a blank screen. I don't know what to write about. Now I got writer's block. I'm going to go back to Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and all that stuff that is candy for the mind. Well, if you do that, you're never going to get ahead in life. And as a writer who has written three books, three books, three best-selling books, I know that you have to get up. And as Mark Twain once said, you got to eat that frog. And he also said that if you have to eat two frogs, he said, first of all, with the first frog, you have to eat that frog first thing in the morning. And he said, if you have to eat two frogs, the best thing to do is eat the biggest frog first. What the heck is he talking about? I thought it was seven-figure lifestyle, not frog-eating lifestyle. Well, here's the thing. What he meant was, if you have a hard task, the best thing to do is do that hard task first thing in the morning. And if you have two hard tasks to do, do the hardest task first, then move to the next one. You go all the way back to the turn of the century. Andrew Carnegie was a steel magnet in uh, Pennsylvania. And he brought in this guy named Ivy Lee. And Ivy Lee taught him, like, hey, listen, every single day you're going to write, every single evening, not the next morning, but every single evening you're going to write down your to-do list of the five most important things. And you're going to come back in the next day, and you're going to start with the hardest thing, number one, and you're not going to go to number two until you've done number one. And then when you're done the second one, you're going to go to the third one. And that is how you're going to be super successful in life. And at the time, Andrew Carnegie paid him $25,000 for that advice back in like 1905 or whatever it was, that was a lot of money back then for that advice and it was just hard work and you have to do it. Now here's the thing, how do you make it easier? You do a little bit of work the night before to make the path smoother. So I got this idea from Chip and Dan Heath, they have this book called Switch and it was all about habit change and they said when you're making a habit change, first of all you gotta have a clear path, you have to know what to do, but you have to make the path easy to go down. So if you want to exercise first thing in the morning, here's a really simple example to understand. You want to exercise first thing in the morning, you're not exercising regularly right now. You wake up in the morning, you go, oh my goodness, my exercise clothes are over there across the room, it's cold, I'm warm in my little burrito bed, and oh man, I don't even know what to do for my workout, so I'm just gonna lie here. Well no, if you plan your workout the night before and you put your exercise clothes beside the bed, the path to success is smoother. So as a writer, I would make sure I put down five bullet points the night before so I didn't wake up in the morning and have a blank screen and writer's block. And that's what you have to do. You have to plan the morning, the night before, because in the morning you have your greatest willpower, discipline, and intention. If you are doing your to-do list first thing in the morning, you're procrastinating. It's already too late. So you got to do that planning the night before. That's how you do it. Next, on the five-figure lifestyle how you have to get to the seven-figure lifestyle is you have to stop the garbage in because garbage coming into your mind means garbage coming out. So if you are sitting down and you're saying, like, I'm going to watch one Netflix show tonight and you watch four or six in a row, listen, a little bit of entertainment's fine, but if you are just feeding your brain with CNN and Fox News and then six episodes of some show that's just all made up and you're putting your life into some made-up world or you're watching every single football game on a Sunday, listen, 
Don't put your identity in the performance of other people. You've never met these guys who play for the New York Jets, and yet you're getting angry, and you're losing energy, and you're spending your entire day watching football. You don't even know these guys. They're younger than you. Get over it. Move on. That is garbage. That garbage is just made to sedate you. And if you're looking forward to a Sunday football every week, well, you need to change your life from Monday through Saturday to make it more impactful. That's what you need to do. So no more garbage from television into your head. If you stopped watching television, your life wouldn't get worse. You'd find some other way to relax. Oh, I gotta, I gotta unwind in front of the television. No, you don't need to unwind in front of the television. It is just mind candy to distract you, to waste your time. So I challenge you, cut your television watching back in half. And if you don't watch that much right now, just cut it all out. Cut it all out and you'll realize, okay, if I can't watch television, what can I do? You know, you can actually spend quality time with your family. You could read a book and learn. You could maybe go to YouTube and learn something. You know, there's some good uses of YouTube. And you could actually just have a more purposeful and fulfilling life without television, okay? But either way, get the garbage television out of your mind. The garbage stuff that you're on talk radio, you don't need that in your head. My friend Alan Cosgrove, two-time cancer survivor, said, plant good things. Your mind is like a garden, make sure to plant good things and water that, okay? Because as Bedros has often said, the grass is green where you water it. And so if you put all of your watering into following NFL teams and you know, professional wrestling and all that stuff, and you invest so much emotion and time into that, what a waste. Like no one at the end of their life is going to sit in a rocking chair and go, man, I wish I watched more Sunday football. No one's going to say that. They're going to go, I wish I didn't watch so much Sunday football and instead spent more time with my family or I, or I you know, made more money for my family so that my family was better off or I made more time for exercise so I was healthier and I wasn't in this rocking chair. That's what you have to think about. Next, no systems, no structure, no success. So the five-figure lifestyle person wakes up, doesn't know what to do. They wake up late, they hit snooze, they scroll immediately, they're late for their work. They get in trouble at work. They're screwing around at work. They're just like, how can I pass the time till I can leave? And then they go home and I don't know what I'm going to do at home tonight. I guess I get some dominoes and watch TV. And that, man, that's like a four-figure lifestyle. Don't get sucked into that. Instead, you've got to have structure and systems in place. Structure and systems in place so that you get more done. You have more of an impact. You're not watching the Empire Podcast to be a schmuck. You're watching the Empire podcast because you want to be an empire builder. You want to travel the world. You want to have great trips. Like Bedros and I went to Europe a couple years ago. He goes to you know, Greece and Italy with his family. I go to Europe every summer for four to six weeks. I've been to 50 countries in the world. I've been to amazing places. I have amazing friends in so many cities around the world. We have this podcast that has watched hundreds of thousands of times. We wouldn't get that done if we were just making stuff up as we went along. There is structure and system. We got here, we immediately, 8.15 to 9.45, we cranked out episodes. We did a sales video. It was all scripted. It was, that's how we do it. That's how we get so much done in so little time. And if you're like, how do these guys do it? It's because we're regimented and you have to be the same way too. Finally, the last thing that a seven-figure earner knows better than a five-figure lifestyle person is that success loves speed and delay kills dreams. Success loves speed. If you go out there and take action, you're going to attract opportunity into your life. If you delay and you go, you know what, I'm going to wait until tomorrow. I don't like the color of my website. I don't want to launch it. I don't like, uh, I don't like the title of my book. I'm going to wait. Man, you're going to delay your dreams. Delay your dreams. You're going to miss the deadlines, miss the opportunities. You're going to miss all of that stuff. But if you're out there taking action, imperfect action, it's going to bring you success. So I have a copywriter client. Guy's name is Isaac Lara. He's 24 years old. He was like, I don't know if I have enough money to invest in the mastermind. I'm like, do it. Take action. He invested $2,000 in the mastermind for one month. I set him up with $10,000 worth of copywriting clients in three weeks. He got a 5x return just from the introductions I made because I'm like, if this guy's going to be taking action and I know he has good skills in copywriting, we're going to be able to make him very successful very fast. And when you do something quickly, you get a quick victory, you get momentum and motivation. But if you delay, you sit there, 
You have this much motivation today and you have this big of a problem in your life and you don't take action today, problem is worse tomorrow, your motivation's lower. You think you're gonna take action now, the next day, problem bigger, motivation lower, you think you're gonna take action now? No, the next thing you know, it's January 1st of next year and you're like, now your motivation is up again, but your problem is like way up here, but at least your motivation is high. And then if you're that type of person, you're gonna delay again, it's gonna kill your dreams. The next thing you know, you're gonna be 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, have never accomplished what you wanted to accomplish, never taken the trips with your family, never been able to take your parents to, to the beach in some country that they've always wanted to go to or taken them back home to the mother country or been able to buy that home so that they no longer have a mortgage. They sacrificed so much for you and you decided to waste it because you delayed and killed your dreams. You killed their dreams. Do you want that hanging on you? No, you don't. And that's why you have to switch from a five-figure lifestyle to a seven-figure lifestyle so you become a seven-figure earner and you have more income, impact, and influence. It starts today, it starts with one habit, it starts with one change, stop snoozing, scrolling, drinking, smoking, joking, toking, Netflixing, all that stuff, all right? You can still have a great life. I have a great life without all of that stuff. 50 countries, 50 amazing places that I've been in all of those countries, all these amazing friends. We have huge networks. Everybody wants to be at the Empire Summit. Everybody wants to be in the Empire Mastermind, but they don't want to give up these five-figure things, and you have to understand, deep down, I want to do that stuff too. I want to sit there and eat chocolate cake for breakfast. I want to watch every football game. I want to watch TV. I want to watch every wrestling match. You know, I want to be a 13-year-old kid for life, but I also realized that as much as I wanted to be a 13-year-old kid for life, I wanted to have impact, income, and influence, and so I said to myself, I'm going to remove the distractions and temptations from my life, I'm going to make discipline easy through subtraction. I'm going to stop all these things because I wanted to write my books. I wanted to have the family that, you know, the dream family, beautiful wife, great kids. I wanted to have business like Fit Body Bootcamp. I wanted to go and make these videos that are watched millions of times. I wanted to show people, young men who were just like me when I was 20, that drinking and partying is not the way to fulfillment but going out and being generous and helping other people is. And I wanted to show people who are on the verge of anxiety attacks, like the anxiety attacks that sent me to the emergency room back in 2006, I wanted to show them a path to avoid those things. And that's more important than me knowing who's in the Super Bowl. I don't care anymore. And every single year I cared less and less and less, and I realized how futile it was. Like you don't, do you even remember who won the Super Bowl last year? Do you remember who won the Stanley Cup? Do you remember who, you know, won the All-Star game. No, nobody cares, nobody knows. It doesn't freaking matter. What matters is you taking the pen and writing the story of your life and becoming a seven-figure earner, seven-figure lifestyle today and kicking those bad habits to the curb, all right? So how are you gonna do that? You're gonna stay tuned in to Bedros and myself on our Instagram, on our podcast here. You're gonna listen to all the shows. If you haven't listened to them, go back to episode 100. Start there, work your way up. To the present, then go all the way back to number one. You'll see how we improved over time through our seven-figure habits, all right? And then what you're going to do next is you're going to come to one of our events. So make sure you go to bedroskoolian.com forward slash empire and apply to either come to our one-day event, we're doing a bunch of these now, or sit in at our mastermind and see what it's all about so that you become the person that you know you can be and reach your potential and achieve your big goals and dreams, all right? We'll see you soon.